Good morning everyone. I'm down here in the wood room and guess what? It's time to finish our chair. Projects have been piling up on it. Isn't this awesome? It's from a tree that fell down. Anyone have any ideas what we should do with this? Let us know. Wow, this is like a challah board. Try a new technique that I haven't tried yet. And instead of sanding it down, I decided that I'm just gonna burn it. It's a way of preserving the wood and it looks really, really cool. The beautiful grain comes out. If this can seal in the wood properly and I just have to sit here and press the button, I'll take this method. And it looks so pretty. It's like all of a sudden all the grain comes out. Okay, I can definitely say towards the end of this process that no, it is not instead of sanded. If you want to have it really, really smooth and sh this is not going to do it for you. Especially like in between the two different pieces of wood. If you don't sand that down and straighten it, it's not going to be. But because this is a garden chair, and I don't mind a rough garden chair, evens out all the like rough splinters and stuff, but it doesn't make it smooth like a sander does. Okay, let's do the very last screw. I really like the way this chair came out. Remind everyone, I am no carpenter and I don't intend to be one. I just enjoy working with wood. I do wish I know I knew a few more things. Might go just take a course just to like some basics I might be missing because I'm all, I just do. Voila! Looks like it's been through the fire and we salvaged it. A few mistakes. If you see, there's a hole through here. See that? <laughs> that shouldn't be there. This should be flush. I'm just going to fill that in <laughs> with silicone. This foot is not that straight. I brushed it once over to get all the black off the first part. Now, if we would have sanded it, then this would all look like one piece instead of three pieces stuck together. Would have been smooth as anything, but it's not. It's a rough garden chair. I like it. I'm on my way to check out our very own olive trees. Now is the time to pick the olives. And olive, olives is a biannual tree, which means it usually gives fruit every other year. It gives more fruit. We picked last year, first time I think in 40 years, olives were picked on campus. We made our own olive oil. Um, we had a wonderful time doing it. So now I'm gonna go check. You always wait till after the first rain to, to pick your olives. And we're gonna go check the trees to see if the girls, if there's enough olives for the girls to pick. These are our olives. If you see, they're not really so nice. Uh, they have dots on them. So this tree has plenty of olives. It's good for oil. I wouldn't say it's like full of olives, but there's definitely enough. One tree. Let's go to the next. And there's olives on this one as well. They've been grown out like to be proper trees instead of short olive trees that we can um, actually use the olives because no one was using the olives till now. So if I want to, I can cut down, trim it. I have to check according to halacha if you're allowed to lower the tree, which means take off all the big branches, lower it, and then... It will make it easier for harvesting if the trees are small. The question is, are we using it as a shade tree as well or a blocking tree from the neighbors? So you have to think of all different things when you take down the height of a tree. But you have this tree right next to it. I don't think it should disturb. Here's another olive tree right here. This one is the biggest, tallest one yet. And most of its olives are on the floor. 
Okay, all these, these are all pits. Olives, the olives turn purple when they're more ripe and you get a, a more bitter oil or a sweeter oil uh, depending on the color. So this is way tall and I don't see where I'll be able to gather olives from this tree at all. Here's the fifth. Oh, okay. This one has lots of olives on it. It's great. We're going to do this one too. Tree number eight is over there on that side. Yeah, that one, that one over there. This tree is full of fruit. I'm excited. The new gardener finally brought me branches from a tree that she claims have the best pomegranate she ever tasted. I want to reproduce that tree and then I know I'll get the exact same pomegranates. So what you do is you take the branches from the tree, if they should be around pencil size thick, and you cut off all the leaves around, have like four or five eyes where the branches were originally attached or where the little twigs were originally attached. This one is a pretty long one, so I'm just gonna cut it in half. This is the size, it's around 15, it's around 20 centimeters and that's enough always plant more than you actually want um, just in case some of them don't work you can always give the starters to friends I have here rooting hormone it's i don't know exactly what it is it's a powder and it just uh helps the roots start now if you're doing this at home then you'd want to make sure you don't turn it over but by mistake and plant it upside down i've had that happen one of the girls the leaves actually grew upside down it was very funny i'll check if i have footage so usually what i recommend is that you slice the bottom on the diagonal and the top straight so when you see a diagonal you also have more surface area you have more surface area for the roots to start coming out if it's on a diagonal. And you also know that the diagonals go on the bottom. I'm just going to pot them all in here and in here in one. Okay. This is it. I'm going to water it really, really well. These are the pomegranates from last year. Uh, we started with this. This is the branch that we started with. And it grew all these branches. And then we're going to prune them. These are all pomegranates from our own tree that the Neve girls did last year to Bishvad. So you see, this is the original stick that we started with. And then all these come out from the sides. So hopefully we'll have luck with this tree. Okay, now, by mistake, all my seed packages were left outside. Well, they weren't left outside. They were left in a closet that water got into it. So they're probably ruined, or I have to pro Yeah, they're probably ruined. I'm just going to check if there's anything that I can use now and plant. Like, there's some things that I can just plant. So I might just do that. Like... Parsley root can go in the ground now. Oh, it's even getting moldy. Oh, what a pity. If there's anything in the beets that can go in. Okay, so this is the garbage pile. These are all mostly empty from, pre from last year's um, planting. So I am not too sad about that. Look at this. The roots are coming through because it was moist this this is a sunflower <laughs> and they sprouted <laughs> the roots are coming through isn't that amazing look at that <laughs> that is too funny uh, same thing happened here with the cabbage sprouted the buckwheat sprouted these did not sprout so I'm gonna try to plant it and peas sprouted so I am going to plant all these right away. And we'll see if they continue to grow. My chair is in its spot. I'm so excited. I'm in my spot. 
and let's see the view from where I'm sitting. This is the view from where I'm sitting. See everything. All the gardens, get to see the pond right here at my feet. And I get to see through there, which I told you over there is gonna be a surprise. Hopefully soon we're working on it. Remember the pink door? So we said we're decor gonna decorate it in the garden. So here it is. It's gonna be going up behind the chair, almost behind the chair, like right here. It's gonna be a decoration and it's gonna be a secret door to nowhere. But I think it will just give some charm to the wall. And we said those two frames didn't work. Look, they're too tiny. So I'm going to go see, go back down to the deep dark dungeons and see if there are frames that are bigger that we can do our art on. Hey, my name is Leora. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. And what's your gardening experience? Um, I just I just love animals. I've gardened with my dad a couple times, but I just spend a lot of time with animals. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. So she's volunteering to help us out with the chickens. She's learning in Mitt Orot. <laughs> we found ripe and ready for eating. So you like them? Yeah, I love passion fruit. Amazing. So I'm just explaining if you eat it out in the garden, it's not a problem. You don't have to take my sir. If you're going to take it inside, then you have to take my... Bye! <laughs> Thanks!